Hi, welcome you all to the today's webinar of this uh, webinar series for WSO2 Enterprise Integrator. Today we will be uh, talking about observability capabilities of WSO2 Enterprise Integrator. I'm Tishan Dahanagage, a technical lead from WSO2 Enterprise Integrator team. And together with me, Senturan Ambalavanar, who is software engineer of uh, WSO2 Enterprise Integrator team, will uh, present this uh, webinar and the following demo so without further ado let's uh, move on to today's agenda so first item on the list is an in and a brief introduction into the observability what it means and why do we need it and then Centurion will go ahead and explain the present capabilities of the product after that I will explain what are we planning for the near future to uh, improve the customer satisfaction on this area and then we follow up with a lengthy demo and a Q&A session. Uh, you can use the inbuilt uh, Q&A window to ask any questions. We will answer them during our Q&A session. So first item, introduction to observability. Uh, for this, uh, I'm using uh, these two quotes by uh, Cindy Sridharan rather than a uh, uh, plain old uh, textbook definition. So this says uh, an observable system exposes enough data about itself so that generating information and easily accessing this information becomes simple. The second part is observability provides highly granular insights into behavior of systems along with rich context perfect for debugging purposes. Why I choose these two sentences is like the first one it explains uh, how your system should behave as an observable system. So your system should expose enough data about itself and that data sh uh, should be, we should be able to simply gener uh, generate information out of that data. And um, also accessing that information should be easy so that uh, anyone can uh, go ahead and Query the status of your system so that your system is observable. And what does it do? So that that observability provides higher granularity insights into the behavior of system along with rich context. Perfect for debugging purposes. So the words to highlight are rich context and higher granularity. You should provide rich context uh, in a higher granularity about your system so that even complex problems can be dealt uh, with the information that you expose. It is not just about exposing some uh, stats and some charts. It's a more of a thoughtful pro process uh, to make systems better. A great synonym that I like to use uh, about this is a car. Let's say you bought a car and uh, if it doesn't have any sort of indications or alerting mechanism for errors, you, it won't be usable. You can't afford to take uh, advice from the guys who made the car um, uh, throughout the, every time it doesn't work, right? It should always uh, show its state and help you to figure out its issues on its own. So this happens in multiple levels. Le the first level is an overview. So in a car, there's a, RPM meter, there's a fuel gauge and there's a speedometer which shows that the engine is running and the car is going at this speed and the fuel level is this. Uh, in synonym, in a software also, it should show that your piece of software is working. It is serving uh, this much of request now and it is responding with this much of latency and this is the current memory footprint of the server and stuff like that. And the second level is alerting, right? In a car, if it is, uh, if there is a, when, when your fuel is low, it will give you an alert so that you can fill it up the car and keep on you going. But if there is no alert, you will be stranded on the road. Same with software. If your server is going out, like if your memory is increasing and it will, it is uh, hitting the, let's say 80% threshold, then you should, you should ideally get an alert saying, hey, your server is going to go out of memory. Um, please attend to that. And then the third level is more complex problems where uh, 
uh, you will need a technical assistant to solve. So in this, in, our, in our example, it will be the check engine light of your car. When it comes up, you know there's something wrong, but you yourself can't fix it. You, but when you take it to a, a technician, they know uh, there is enough information there for them to extract and treat the root cause. Same thing uh, goes on with software as well. If there are any uh, complex things like an internal exception or something, the system should expose enough information for a technical person to observe, understand, and then uh, debug the issue and find the root cause, or rather isolate it to a point where they can continue the investigation. So this is the this is why we need observability, and this is the direction that we are looking in the future to steer the observable story of our products so i'll be explaining um, what we are going in the future at the end of the webinar but that is basically the uh, guideline that we are taking into account when uh, defining our next journey so to achieve this uh, what should we do to achieve this observability that should be done uh, that is based on basically on three pillars Log, from technical point of view those are logs metrics and tracing when you talk about logs a log is an immutable record of discrete events that happened over time this is the almost like the oldest form of uh, way to uh, record the state of a system this persisted and you can go ahead and check the sequential events that occurred through the system in the past during a given time frame using uh, logs but your logs should be uh, uh, well uh, organized and in, in nowadays it should be structured so that your log processing systems can easily process it and uh, do the pre-processing and organize it and show it in a way that you can easily analyze and figure out the root cause and then the second part is metrics by definition metrics is a set of numbers that give information about a particular process or activity uh, an example would be the request count or the request latency uh, or the current memory footprint so metrics came into light um, recently and then um, more and more systems are um, exposing metrics in uh, different ways so so the most uh, uh, earlier way I would say is like using MBNs and now uh, people are converting more towards uh, newer technologies like uh, Prometheus. And then the third part is tracing. A trace is representation of series of casually related distributed events that encode the end-to-end -end request flow through a distributed system. So this is uh, a quite recent and uh, a really helpful uh, uh tool in um, debugging complex issues so in a, in, a, in a practical situation your system is something that is connected of multiple pieces and the six single request will uh, go through different uh, systems provided by different vendors which will do heterogeneous tasks but if an issue arises you should uh, have the capability to uh, drill down through each and every system and uh, figure out what is what is happening whether what inside what component it failed or if it is like a slow response scenario what component is taking the most time to respond so that is uh, that has become uh, feasible with a uh, new uh, tracing uh, initiative such as open telemetry and in, in from an implementation point of view uh, implementation such as uh, EAG. So, uh, uh, but in a traditional way, we used to do tracing earlier, uh, before the time of EAG and all, we used to do uh, tracing through correlation logs where it, it is the same concept, but it is more bulky and uh, uh, it is hard to analyze when compared with uh, a more uh, modern tracing implementation. So these are mainly the three pillars that will provide observability for you. And uh, we will be um, 
focusing our efforts to improve each and every one of these three fields to provide you with a better observability experience. Uh, with that, I am going to uh, hand over the webinar to Senturan, who will go around and explain the present capabilities of the enterprise integrator around observability. Thank you, Tishan. So I'm here to explain the present capabilities of uh, WSO2 EI suits observability. So when it comes to uh, the WSO2 micro integrator, the first thing you will need to view is the management information, which means uh, the information about Synapse artifacts deployed in the MI server. So for that purpose, we are providing you two representations. The first one is the micro integrated dashboard. So the target audience for the micro integrated dashboard would be business users who would like to see graphical view of management information. So this is a web based console which you can bring up in your browser. So the second view would be for the same purpose, uh, the micro integrator CLI. So this is targeted towards uh, DevOps users who don't like to or who don't need to see UI stuff but they want everything uh, under their terminal. So this is uh, a tool like uh, Docker CLI or kubectl, which you can launch at your terminal and see the information just there. So what happens after you get to know about the uh, management information? So you will send messages to the micro integrator, which will be processed and sometimes it might fail. So you have to know what happened to the messages uh, that I did send or what have caused the messages to fail, stuff like that. So for these purposes, we are exposing statistics of the integration runtime through our in-house developed feature, which is the EI analytics powered by the stream processor, which is there from WS2 Enterprise Integrator 6.x family. So the statistical information collected through this will be helpful to understand the overall health of a system and do proper capacity planning so that your runtimes are always uh, running healthy. And also this information will be valuable for debugging and troubleshooting uh, runtime issues. So this EI analytics dashboard will look like this, where you will get so much of useful information such as the request count, which will say about the number or percentage of requests. And we will have the overall throughput uh, which will say about throughput per seconds uh, came across by the system by the server. Then we have overall message count, which says uh, which says about the successful message count plus the failed message counts uh, during a particular time period. Then we have uh, we will be showing each messages passed through a particular artifact, uh, which is more like a log. Uh, so what I mean when an artifact is a synapse artifact, which is either proxy service, API, endpoint, or something like that. Then we also have artifacts ranked by request count, which will help you to uh, get information about artifacts that were utilized the most during a particular time period. So again, artifacts means synapse artifact. Then when it comes to metrics, JMX is a conventional way of exposing metrics. Uh, we can expose metrics through JMX in something called uh, through an MB. So due to this conventional mean of exposing data, we have enabled uh, JMX reporting in all our WSO2 products by default. So we expose the same kind of M beans through all of these three means, uh, that is JMX monitoring, Prometheus, and SNMP monitoring. We also support monitoring message round trips. So this is a special thing for HTTP messages. As Tishan said earlier, this was existing from the time when there was no tracing. So what happens here is when you send an HTTP message to WS2 to MI, uh, the HTTP message will go through several state changes. To track those state changes, we will be having something called a correlational log. And for each such state change, we will be producing a new log entry in the correlation, row, correlation log. So each of these entry will be having an HTTP message ID, which is unique for each separate HTTP request. So this will help to monitor HTTP requests from the point that was received by the MI until it is sent back to the original sender. Then we also support standard logging, which is we have carbon logs that manages uh, 
that looks after the management features and we have audit logs which track sequence of actions that affect a particular task in the server we have patch logs which we use to detect patch changes and to denote patch changes to the user we have wire logs which is used to monitor http messages flowing through the mi so this is recommended only to be used for troubleshooting purposes and we also have something called http as access logs so these are basically requests and response that are logged to monitor activities related to usage of an application so this will help to monitor information such as who accessed the product how many hits were received and what are the errors uh, things like that then we also have support for service or event tracing logs uh, these are used to trace services and events using a separate log file now let me hand over the presentation to Tishan again to talk about future improvements. Thank you, Santuran. So uh, you have heard of all the present features that we have, and a few minutes later, Santuran will demo almost all of that features. But before that, let me briefly talk about the future improvements. I am not going to be very detailed on, on this because this is something that we are going to do in future, and so I can't mention the particular technologies and all. But for your information, I'm going to uh, explain the direction that we are taking in terms of our future. So first and foremost thing is a unified observability center. So from the features that uh, Centron mentioned, you must have uh, observed that like the stats are in the analytics dashboard. But for logs, you will have to use your own uh, log analysis tooling, which means if you are uh, analyzing an issue or a matrix and you want to find the logs related to that thing you have to move to a separate application or rather go ahead and tell your logs so uh, we want to uh, minimize that and give users a, a solid experience in a in a single ui where they can view both uh, matrices and logs and all the observability information that need so uh, that is uh, one major thing that we are focusing on as we use improvements. And the other thing is uh, improved uh, user experience and a user flow. So this goes hand in hand with the unified observability center, of course. So when you have uh, things scattered uh, all over the place, the define the user flow is also affected. We want to have an intuitive user flow in a way such that uh, let's say if you receive an alert the alert itself should be self-descriptive and also navigate you through a uh, process for you to rather either uh, fix the issue or go ahead and uh, isolate the root cause for the issue so that what we are working on is uh, that navigation part and to make sure that that navigation is intuitive even for a new user like in the given uh, tooling, it is of course easier for us to navigate around and find the thing. But uh, when it comes to a new user, we have seen that uh, people are not utilizing it for the extent that they should be utilizing. So um, uh, as a reason, we guess that this uh, the less intuitiveness or uh, uh, less content around it. That's why we get webinar plus for the future, we'll be improving that intuitiveness. And the other part is the improved car cloud nativeness and container friendliness. So in the current way, we will have a, we have a, a centralized observability uh, collection center and a separate dashboard, uh, which is uh, hardwired with the gateway or rather micro integrator nodes. So this uh, way of wiring uh, hinders the capabilities or advantages offered by container uh, based infrastructures or, uh, or Kubernetes based infrastructures. So we want to uh, go towards a more um, container friendly environment where our observability solution should be able to uh, discover so use service discovery mechanisms to discover the new instances automatically and report the stats without having you to you know uh, figure out an IP address and like have an assigned IP address for UMI and so that uh, we can go ahead and scrape rather than, uh, rather than uh, 
doing it automatically so that is another thing that we're looking at and the final thing is tracing so um Centron will also explain the demo we already have a tracing our own in-house uh, deployed uh, developed version of tracing and also correlation logs to uh, calculate round trip time and all but uh, what we have figured out over the time is like uh, maintaining a tracing implementation on our own is going to be costly and uh, keeping it up with the um, the enterprise is gonna take a uh, lot of effort so we are looking at uh, options to uh, go ahead and uh, be par with uh, all the tracing solutions out there and uh, be uh, confirmed to all the uh, new standards such as uh, open telemetry and stuff so this is something also we are actively looking into and uh, actively looking into to make uh, the product um, comply with open telemetry standards and so that any user who has uh, active uh, tracing infrastructure can also um, go ahead and monitor WS2 micro integrator using the same infrastructure and um, have a, a good solid view about uh, their system. So all these improvements are uh, in uh, in the roadmap and uh, uh, plan for the quarter two release of ours so um, yeah uh, we are we also excited to uh, release out these features and make the observability experience better for our users and in turn we are hoping uh, to have a good customer experience and uh, less customer issues coming into us uh, and also uh, for, for the issues a uh, better turnaround right time because system itself exposed enough information so that we can easily isolate the issue uh, with that i'm going to hand over the presentation back to uh, centuran to demo you the current uh, features thank you tisha so it's time for the demonstration for the demonstration purpose, I have a simple API here. So let me explain about the simple API first of all. So this API has a resource, which is a get method. When you send a request, first it will produce a log. So the log will say, welcome to healthcare service, uh, healthcare service API. Healthcare API is the name of our API. So after logging that, the request will be sent through a send mediator to an endpoint named query doctor EP. So we will be having a backend which is denoted by this endpoint. So the endpoint will direct the request to the backend where the message will be processed and the backend will return a response. That response will be sent through the send mediator towards the out of the API where you get the ultimate response of your request. So first and foremost, let me start the backend service which I call the hospital service. So I have started the service before starting micro integrator. I have to start two things. One is the analytics worker. So this is responsible for collecting runtime information from the micro integrator in order to visualize our dashboard. The second thing is the Prometheus server, which we use to scrape the JMX MBNs, which are exposed through the WSO2 MI. So I have already done the done those two here so let me go ahead and start the micro integrator so i will be starting this with two flags the first one is enabling management api so as i said earlier we are providing management capabilities through two different views one is the monitoring dashboard and the other one is the micli so when we enable the management api both of them will be able to communicate to the micro integrator through this particular api the next one is enabling the Prometheus API. This is to expose JMX MBNs through Prometheus API. So let's start micro integrator. Now the micro integrator is up and running. As you can see, it says the micro integrator management REST API is enabled. So now assume that I am a business user who would like to see this management information through a uh, graphical representation so let me start the mi monitoring dashboard using this particular command
so the dashboard can be accessed with this URL now let me go ahead and paste it in my browser Here, let's give the URL of our MI server and admin as the username, admin as the password. Now we can see the server information of the micro integrator, uh, information such as the version, the micro integrator home, the Java version, and the OS version, things like that. On the left side, I can see all the possible Synapse artifacts that could be deployed to the micro-integrator server. So let's say if I click API, I can see the list of APIs that were deployed in my micro-integrator server. So the healthcare API is the particular API we are interested for this demonstration purpose. So we can see if we click the healthcare API, we can see the configuration of this particular API. Now let's imagine that I'm a user who is a more DevOps oriented person who doesn't like to use a UI, but I have to see everything in the terminal. So for that, we are using a tool called the MI CLI. So I can bring it up with a command like this MI. So initially it will show all the available commands. So let me first log into the MI server using the command MI remote login. Now let me enter admin admin as the username and password uh, the login was successful now if i want to list down the apis when i execute this particular command i can see that two apis are, are listed down and as i said earlier this is the one we are interested in same as if we say mi endpoint show it will list down both of these endpoints that I have again query doctor API is the one I am interested in now after seeing the management information of WSO to MI we are now interested in seeing the JMX ambience that are exposed through WSO to MI for that I am using J console which is a tool that is provided by JDK by default so I have that already open let me create a new connection and here I'm going to select micro integrator as the local process and let me try connecting to it. So at the first glance, you will be seeing some overview uh, details such as the heap memory usage, threads, number of classes that has been loaded, CPU usage, stuff like that. When I go to the MBINs section and if I expand org Apache Synapse, I can see the attributes that are exposed by the endpoint, the query doctor EP endpoint. So here there are some useful attributes such as the bytes received, bytes sent, and false receiving, false sending. So let me go ahead and send a couple of messages to the API and let's see how does that behave. So for that, I'm using a curl request which will talk to this API. Now I have got a response, which means that my request has been successful. If I go back to the J console and if I refresh, I can see that bytes receive has been increased. Why? Because I have just sent a curl request. So let me send a couple of, let me send the same curl a couple of more times. And let's visualize this same information through the Prometheus graph. So if I go here and type endpoint, it will show every JMX MB that is exposed by a Synapse endpoint. So here we are interested in bytes received. When I execute, I can see that there are some values appearing. So which means that the green color is, the green color one denotes the query doctor, I'm sorry, the red color one denotes the query doctor EP, which has some values. And the, the other endpoint, which is the query payment EP, doesn't have any values because I haven't sent any request to that until now. So that's how you monitor JMX MBINs through exposed through WSO2 MI. So the next thing is about our analytics profile. So for that, first of all, you have to start the analytics worker, which I said I have already done. 
as the second step i am going to start the analytics dashboard so we can bring it up with the command like this so i can access the portal through this particular url let's give admin admin as the username and the password so when i initially go to the portal and open up this dashboard i can see the overview of the complete integration runtime happened through this particular time period so let me set this time period to the past day so here i'll set the granularity mode to r and today is february uh, 27th of february so i'll set from day to 2020 february 26th let's say the time is from 10 a.m and i'll set the end time to 10 p.m today now we can see that our system has received totally 124 requests we are 80 of them have succeeded and the rest have been failed so to understand or obtain more information about these requests i can see this widget which is on my right side the overall message count widget so this particular graph shows me information about the number of succeeded messages plus the number of failed messages per hour during the past day by seeing this fault count i can observe something strange so this means that i have i have come across so many faults comparing to the other regions in this particular time period which is 10 30 pm on the 26th of february so initially i can assume that these failures are caused by most probably a server failure or an unavailability of the endpoint or maybe high high increased throughput amount in the server so to further increase i can also take note of the success count so there is at least one i mean there are a couple of messages which have succeeded so that i can further state that the endpoint was not completely down or the failure was not complete failure but it's more like an intermittent kind of failure or the failure has been occurred due to an increased throughput so to further understand that i'm going to take help of this overall tps graph which appears on my left side so here if i see the same time where most of the failures occurred i can see a spike in the graph which say, which says me uh, the average throughput to the system has increased a lot so by this i can narrow down my assumption scope and state that most probably the root cause for this failure can be the increment in average throughput so i can't conclude and confirm that 100% but it's obviously narrowing down the scope to perform further investigations then on the right side we have the top APIs by request count which states that the healthcare API was the most utilized or the most used API during the past day and the audit API holds the second place as similar to the top APIs we also have top endpoints top sequence and top inbound endpoints organized by request count so now let's say i'm interested in the details of the healthcare api in particular so let me click that so now it will show a dashboard with an overview specific to this healthcare api so this says there have been 99 total requests with a success rate of 66 percentage on the right side i have a widget called api message latency which i can use to evaluate my api's efficiency so if you take this particular segment i can say that the latency has been too high which is pretty bad scenario for the api and if you take this particular segment uh, the latency is low which is kind of a good thing for the api below that we have message traces which is basically tracks of each message that passed through this particular healthcare api so what information can we obtain from these 
message traces for that let me filter out only the failed messages so if i enter fail as the keyword all the failed messages will be listed down first i will relate these statuses with the start times by relating that i can say that around 2242 the status has been failed which means that within this particular time duration something happened similar to a server failure or an unavailability of the backend and if i relate these statuses to hosts i can say that these particular hosts were causing problems or service to these hosts were denied or were struck so obviously these are appearing from my own machine so if you have more hosts then you can assume that connections to a particular set of hosts are being problematic below we have the message flow which describes visually the message flow of the api so if this is wrong as what you require that means you have to uh, redeploy re iterate redevelop and redeploy your artifact so if we go into detail to a message trace which has been failed we see the lock mediator in red color which means that the message has not gone beyond the lock mediator so in this case the message hasn't reached the endpoint that was the actual reason so with this particular view i am able to figure out this actual reason so when i click this i see the payload and the transformations below which are pretty much useful during the debugging and troubleshooting process for this error so that's pretty much for the demonstration and it's time to move for the q a session so if you guys have any questions you can use the inbuilt tool in the go to in, go to webinar and ask us questions and we will be happy to answer them okay so one question is is this tool completely open source yes it is completely open source and apache license and uh, you are free to download use it try it out and do whatever you want and i so the first question is uh, is this tool completely open source yes it is completely open source and it is distributed under apache license so you, you are free to download it try it and use it um, second question is how can i protect a car file password expectation so uh, if, if there are any uh, uh, password or sensitive information that is going inside a car file you can use uh, our secure vault and cipher tools to uh, encrypt them so that the configuration itself won't have the plain text password but the runtime will decode it and use it how can i turn off the menu such as hl7 so if you want to comply to a, a stand such as hl7 or so currently in the in the uh analytics tool it would be there, there's no like a built-in function to do that it will be a, a an improvement rather an improvement or an new feature how do you messages between microservices so i don't know whether i understand the question um properly so so how our Product work is like it's a micro integrator. It can host uh, 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 in, a, in a basic sense, it can host a HTTP web service or rather a microservice, right? So you can either have several microservices running on the same runtime or you can have a, a separate micro integrator runtime per your microservices. And then you can service chain them using um, HTTP itself. Or you can use uh, any other uh, well-known uh, protocol that micro integrator supports okay, how do you uh, trace messages between microservices so currently this is something that uh, we don't have 
the tracing that we showed you is is not between microservices that is between internal components of the products so uh, so in our case a service comprised of set of mediators that are chained together so since it is internal we can easily track it out but currently uh, if you deploy a cluster of micro integrators there's we can't take holistic uh, tracing view uh, of the full system and that is what i talked about in the future improvement section whereas we are working on towards providing a holistic overview of the full cluster from a tracing point of view Okay, the next question is uh, how do you alert based on different threshold cpu memory error count so currently the practice that we are using is uh, because we uh, we expose those metrics using jmx we can use uh, tools like uh, i think the devops team is using nagios and such tools for alerting currently uh, and there's no capability for us to uh, alert based on like service threshold like if this service goes uh, out of this error rate or this error threshold but that is uh, also a thing that we are looking for a quarter to release to do uh, both uh, instance level alerting rather operational observability alerting plus uh, more like business business sense alerting like if your service is uh, if your services response time is greater than this threshold or if your error rate of your service is greater than this, this threshold it can uh, alert you uh, on a given uh, medium such as a email or a slack channel or a page or something like that so that is something that we are actually working to wow next question is what is sequence proxy service and api in ef so proxy service and api are the two high level uh, construct of ei proxy service is basically a uh, i would say a http service where you can expose an http service and api is uh, where you can expose a restful api http service and sequence mm -hmm. is a, a low level construct where a proxy service will contain uh, one or multiple sequences inside that same as api so by default we will have a thing called a in sequence and out sequence where your request will uh, go into the in sequence by default and the response message will be um, delivered through your out sequence and inside this sequence we we have these components called mediators um, and these uh, mediators are the ones that will actually uh, do the work so and also this sequence you can define your custom sequence and then plug it onto your proxy service or api how do you relate streaming integrator use cases with observability so streaming integrator will also so um, with a streaming integrator has its own um, uh, monitoring tool uh, which is called a status dashboard, uh, which shows the almost the same kind of information that we showed in the in this analytics profile. And in the future, we will be uh, bringing both of them together. Whereas, regardless of whether you have a micro integrator and a stream integrator and a mix of them, uh, there will be one place for you to uh, analyze the and show the stats of uh, both of them logs and matrices and also the business stats all will be available from a single show seems like those are the only questions that we have at the moment and uh, we will wrap up this session for now if you have further questions or if the answers were not clear you can all you are always welcome to uh, follow up with an email or you can just send your question to our slack channel we would be happy to answer and happy to help you out uh, uh, thank you for your time and have a nice day